Hello and good morning to all. Uh, participants are requested to note that we'll start the webinar in five to ten minutes. I repeat, we'll start the webinar in more five to ten minutes. As participants are still joining the webinar, so we'll wait for them to get in. Then we'll start. Thank you.
guys we are yet to start the webinar till the time you can go and check our social media platforms and follow them i have shared the link in the chat box for you all also i have shared the links urls for the ai 900 certification batch and ai 102 certification batch so steps has been mentioned with the same so you just have to follow these steps and get your batch activated so this batch will help you with the study material in this batch uh, you will get ai 900 uh, study material as well as ai 102 certification study material so get your batch activated okay so to make you all understand those who have uh, not connected the ai 900 certification uh, batch or you can say webinar and ai 102 we have connected last week so these are the batches which we have uh, like given in that uh, webinar to all the participants so that they can go through the study material and modules for the certification so these are the steps which i have to follow to get the batch activated also with the steps i have mentioned the url so you have to just get your microsoft learn account open once you you just have to click the uh, click on the link which has been mentioned you have to go on microsoft learn and if you don't have any account you have to just sign in and get your account open after that you have to click on the urls which i which i have shared in the chat box to get the code activated once the code get activated uh, the redemption will take place and the batch will reflect on your profile as you can see on the screen you can go in the module courses and more to uh, to see the batch here you can see also if you face any problem please do connect with me in the chat box you can share your queries related to it
so answering to the aniket's question uh, so the batch has overview of the modules for ai 900 and ai 102 certification so you will get an overview of the modules learning path and more in that batch so once you read it it will reflect in your learn learn profile Okay, so we will start with the webinar now. So, good morning to one and all, and welcome you all. And this webinar on harness the power of next generation chatbot, the OpenAI, ChatGPT, and GPT-4. So, talking about our today's event sponsor, Synergetics. So, as you all know, Synergetics is India's one of a kind corporate learning solution company. so do provide microsoft trainings certification trainings also we do provide group trainings on solutions like onboarding solution reskilling solution certification solution certification plus add on solution cloud adoption solution architecting solution practice playbook solution latest technology training solution and emerging technology training solution then we have uh, atc community which organ which has like handled by us and is sponsored by synergetics and microsoft so we under this atc community we have communities like emerging technology community for all then we have azure tech community pune for pune kers then we have emerging technology community surat then azure tech community nagpur so you just have to get install the meetup app on your phone or on your device to follow this communities so i will share the link for the same in the chat box so you can go and follow our communities to get the relevant updates on the upcoming webinars workshop which we do code of conduct please note no one is allowed to take this screenshot of the presentation while speaker is sharing his screen and cannot do the screen recording also guys please note this recording will be uploaded on our official youtube channel so make sure you follow our youtube channel to get access for the same i will share the youtube channel link in the chat box for you all then speaker for this webinar is mr sonu satyadas he is an mct microsoft certified trainer and practice head then agenda for this session so this session will help you to understand the need for the chatbot and more then as i said earlier we are shared the ai 900 and ai 102 learning achievement batch so get your batch ready for the same also we do have two more webinars on ai technology so i will share the details and the registration for form in the chat box for you all do follow us on our social media platforms i have already shared the links for the same that's all from my side over to you sonu sir thank you yeah thank you chaitali hello uh, everyone good morning hope i am audible to all of you
so I have shared my screen. I hope the screen is visible to all of you. Myself, uh, Sonu Satidas, working as a practice head for open source and uh, .NET technologies and working as a cloud consultant for uh, AWS and Microsoft Cloud. So I'm into this industry uh, from last 14 plus years. So I'm a Microsoft certified trainer, primarily delivering the session certification sessions for Microsoft on various uh, certifications. In this today's session, we are talking about the open AI chat GPT. So we will be discussing about the artificial intelligence basics. Then we talk about the open AI, what is open AI and how it is evolved. And what are the different uh, uh, models available in open AI and their features? Then understanding the chat GPT 3.5, which is the currently available public model. And the next generation chat GPT, uh, that is GPT-4. And finally, we'll end up with the Azure Open AI. So talking about the artificial intelligence, one of the popular and trending topic nowadays, because every application service organizations individuals everyone is talking about the artificial intelligence so applications are using ai features to enhance the capabilities of the application the products are using the ai features it could be end users application or a B2B application. All the organizations, whether it is a manufacturing industry or a development application, development industry, IT industry, or even in the training industry, we talk about AI nowadays because the future is artificial intelligence. Nowadays, you can see most of the applications and services started using the artificial intelligence functionalities, either in a small scale or in a big scale. You can see the driverless cars, which is an implementation of artificial intelligence. Or you can see the e-commerce applications like uh, Flipkart or Amazon, where you are getting the product suggestions. Yes, if you purchase this product, you can also purchase the other product. So it's because this is purchased commonly, means they, uh, people purchase this product together so the, those suggestions comes, it's also part of artificial intelligence only. So whether it is in a lower scale or in a higher scale, we are using artificial intelligence. See, if you use your mobile phones to take a selfie, after you take the photo, you can see that your face can be tagged. It will be marked in a rectangle and you can easily tag your photo. The face you can tag. It is also an application of artificial intelligence. So whether knowingly or unknowingly, we are using the artificial intelligence in our daily life. So what is artificial intelligence? It is the 
सॉफ्टवेयर और एप्लीकेशन दैट कैन एनहेंस द फीचर्स ऑफ अवर एक्सिस्टिंग प्रोडक्शन सर्विसेस इट कैन प्रोवाइड ह्यूमन और इट कैन प्रोवाइड ह्यूमन लाइक कैपेबिलिटीज फॉर uh understanding the images and analyzing the images videos drawing the videos sorry drawing the images or editing the images analyzing the text or uh, converting the uh, audio into the text format or text into audio format creating the captions for audios taking decisions based on the data which is coming and reacting to it all is applicability of application uh, sorry, artificial intelligence so we primarily use artificial intelligence in uh, analyzing the images and uh, videos that is for visual perception when we provide an image the artificial intelligence can tell you what is that image whether it is an image of an animal or it's an image of a landscape or it's an image of a building or what is the content of that particular image it can also tell you what are the different objects found in that uh image so what are the different objects detected in that image it can also identify the faces and you can also tag the objects and persons in that image right so that is a feature that you use in your mobile phones so for analyzing the images we can use artificial intelligence one of the most commonly used uh, feature is optical character recognition ocr functionality so whenever you take a photo of a menu card the ai can convert that image into text means whatever a uh, text printed on that menu card can be converted into text so that you can copy or paste or edit that text that is a capability of artificial intelligence when it comes to text analysis you can analyze the given text and identify the language which we call as language detection feature it can identify the sentiments of that particular text whether this statement is a positive or negative or a sad or happy so nowadays this is mostly used for processing the feedback from the customers so you must have seen in facebook there is an option for uh, in the flipkart there is an option whenever you go and see the product reviews below in the products reviews you can see an option show all the positive reviews so it will show only those positive reviews and when you go and uh, select or filter show negative reviews so it will show and filter the negative reviews only so whether they are using artificial intelligence for that or just doing the uh, filtering based on the rating but yes you can do that with the help of artificial intelligence so whatever feedback text the user has given the text analysis service can analyze and identify whether it is a positive feedback or negative feedback saying that suppose i am a person who stayed in a hotel and if i am satisfied while leaving i can give a feedback in the website saying that okay i like this hotel 
it's a provide uh, means a uh, good service good food spacious rooms good light and other uh, features so i can give some good feedback like this or even i can provide some bad feedback the service is not good they are not providing the facilities on time or uh, rooms are very small and not neat and clean so this kind of feedbacks we can provide so every day maybe hundreds of customers providing the feedback the website wants to identify which of the feedbacks are positive so that they can highlight those feedbacks in their feedback uh, or reviews page so how the application can identify which is the positive feedback from the given text so they can use the sentiment analysis feature of the artificial intelligence now when it comes to the speech service speech service provides primarily two functionalities one is converting the audio into text and text into audio so whenever you watch youtube there is an option to turn on and off the captions when you turn on the caption it will give you the real time captions in the screen so that means from the audio from the audio it is generating the text what the person is talking in the uh, when in the screen what is the person is talking that exact text is converted or exact audio is converted into text and printed in the caption area right so that is speech to text api text to speech is also uh, available in now website for example if you visit a websites like a uh, wikipedia or some kind of uh, uh, news web website we can see for people who have some vision issues they are providing option for generating audio for example in the in some area or in some corner of the text they can provide a mic mic or oh sorry speakers a symbol when they click on the speaker button it will start reading the text so from the text it is generating the audio so it will read that content of that website and produce the audio output now the speech recognition apis or speech apis also provide the speaker recognitions means if you are into a conversation you want to identify the voices of each speaker you can use the speaker recognition functionality along with that decision making purposes we use artificial intelligence like uh, if you go to the microsoft artificial intelligence services there is a service called anomaly detection anomaly detection helps you to analyze the stream of data and then detect the anomalies for example in a warehouse if we have hundreds of temperature sensors and we need to keep the uh, temperature inside the warehouse between uh, 10 degree and 15 degree or 10 degree and 20 degree maximum so the temperature sensors can continuously monitor the temperature inside the warehouse and send this temperature data to the cloud services whenever the temperature value goes below the 10 degree or above 20 degree it has to provide a notification and then act upon that that means if the temperature is too low then it has to turn off some of the air conditioners if the temperature is higher more than 20 degree then turn on the Uh, air conditions 
or uh, maybe uh, increase sorry decrease the temperature value like that right adjust the temperature in the air conditioners so those actions has to be taken but for that we have to continuously monitor and analyze the temperature data so the anomaly detector will continuously monitor the temperature data whenever it identifies a variation in the given threshold then it will uh, take some action to prevent this so that is one kind of decision making service and there are many applied ai functionalities available such as converting the uh, application forms data into database entries means converting from images into text okay that is not the ocr it is the form recognition services so there are different applications for artificial intelligence for image analysis text analysis speech analysis and the decision making but for all these the base is data science so what is data science data science is the analysis of data using some mathematical and statistical techniques so we analyze the large volume of data by using some statistical and mathematical techniques to produce some results so we have maybe millions or trillions of uh, records or entries by analyzing this data we can identify some uh, or we can come to a conclusion okay this is how it happened or this is what happened but the same data we can use to predict what will happen in the future it's called machine learning so we use data and algorithms to predict what will happen in the future so we are going one more step ahead okay it's not only just analyzing the past data and coming to a conclusion okay this is what happened using the same data we can come to a prediction okay we have analyzed the past 10 years of data so based on that data we can come to a conclusion that it will uh means this will happen in the next year also okay because the machine learning is a predictive analysis which means it will analyze and predict what will happen in the future so your artificial intelligence is an implementation of machine learning so whatever artificial intelligence models or applications that you use is all using machine learning models inside it so whether it is a image analysis or a, a speech service or a text analysis service whatever ai functionality or feature you use in your application it is primarily using a machine learning model so these models can be either a pre built model or as a developer you can create your own models so the models if you uh, consider or if you identify you can use the the machine learning models which are already created by some organizations like the microsoft aws open ai google and many other organizations they have already created some machine learning models machine learning models means there are some uh, algorithms used to analyze the data to predict something which means they have already trained that model using the algorithm and the data they have created a model 
and this model is already trained with millions of data so you can just use that model to provide your input and get the prediction okay so this is called a pre built models but yes some of the organizations provides the tools and services to develop your own machine learning model means if you are uh, a machine learning developer you can use the microsoft machine learning studio to create your own machine learning model which means you can select an algorithm you can provide the training data and you can create the machine learning model out of that and then you can publish that model to make it available to the other users so as a ml developer you can create your own custom models it is also possible so organizations like the microsoft and aws provides options for creating your own machine learning model so you can use either the pre built models or you can use uh, a custom model which means you can create your own model some of the organizations provides a hybrid model which means they have already trained the model with some data but yes you can enhance the features of this model by providing your own custom data like if you go to microsoft uh, cognitive services such as face api custom vision louis or qna services they have provided the machine learning models but how to train the model or on what data you have to train the model that you can decide suppose if i want to create a nlp service natural language processing service they are providing a language understanding machine learning model but how to detect or how to predict the results that you can train using your own data there is a q and a service question and answering service available in the microsoft azure cognitive services which provides a machine learning model but you can provide the input and then train the model to produce a result which means the machine learning model is pre created but you can customize or you can train the model with your own data to get the desired result so three categories we can see here one you can use the pre trained machine learning models which does not require any other or any further training because it's already trained with the millions of data you can just consume that models second option is create your own custom models the cloud service provider may be providing the tools and services for developing a model so they are in case of microsoft they are providing the machine learning studio so that you can use uh, that tools and services to create your own model in the third scenario you can use some pre created models but you can provide your own data and train the model and republish the trained model so that you can use that customize the model so but whatever uh, artificial intelligence functionalities you use behind the scene there is a machine learning model runs another important point we need to consider while building the ai based applications is responsible ai because since 
the artificial intelligence based applications are now becoming very popular as a developer or as an ai engineer we need to consider these points first of all fairness which means there should not be any bias okay because this bias can affect the results whenever you build an ai based application it should be applicable for everyone and it should not uh, shows any discrimination for example if somebody is requesting for a loan in the bank the bank may be using a machine learning model to decide whether the loan to be approved or not approved yes the machine learning model obviously analyze the financial status of the user then decide whether he, we can provide the loan or not provide the loan but it should not consider a gender to decide this okay this is a male or this is a female so we should not provide loan okay so such kind of discrimination should not be there okay reliability and safety when you consider that errors may harm uh, uh, others so whenever you build the ai based applications and services make sure that it should not harm anybody else for example the driverless cars what happens if there is a failure happens or if there is a mistake happens if there is an error in the prediction because the driverless cars uses cameras to find the objects in the opposite side and then based on that it is taking a decision where to go left right or straight right what if there is an error it may causes a collision and then it may affect the passengers okay so that you have to consider next is privacy and security nowadays we use the ai services to take the decisions like as i have mentioned earlier for the loan approval the system will understand and study the entire financial status of the applicant so the system is understanding what is his salary in which bank he is receiving it all informations and these data should not be exposed what if this data is exposed to publicly it will affect that applicant badly right similarly the medical reports of patients because now you know you must you must have seen in movies many of this research labs are using the patients health reports to generate the new medicines or to create or to develop new medicines and vaccines so if you expose this medical informations publicly we cannot predict how others will use this okay so the data should not be ex exposed inclusiveness solutions may not work for everyone which means when you build an ai based application yes you are developing an ai based application but it may not be suitable for all types of users for example yes your application may be suitable for a person who can see but what if a visually impaired person is trying to use that application or a service so you have to provide some audio output also for such people so suppose if he is a visually impaired person the system should provide audio instructions okay you can do this you can do that next you can do that so that they can also use that service or application so we have to include everyone transparency means users must trust a complex system which means on what basis the ai service is taking a decision the user must be aware about that so yes a uh, nowadays we can see in uh, uh, television every uh, 
sports channel they are giving the uh, mutual funds investments advertisement so the application will tell you okay you can invest on that or you can invest on this this is providing more profit than the other but the system should tell on what basis it is telling so it has to give a solution that okay we are telling uh, you to invest on this because this company is making continuous profit from last to five years so that is a answer to that question right so the system should uh, should be transparent so how the system is taking a decision it should be aware to the end user or simply if i'm if, if the system is saying okay whether the loan can be approved or not approved yes approved or not approved simply it cannot take a decision on what basis it is taking that that decision yes we have analyzed your uh, income and the expense expense details in your civil score is only this much and you already have this many loans so because of that we are taking this decision so that should be conveyed to the user so that is then only the user can trust the system right so this i'm just giving an example accountability that means who is liable for an ai driven decision so whatever ai decisions taken who is accountable for that whether it is a loan approval system or it is a driverless car if something happens or whatever decisions taken who is liable for that yes obviously the developer of the machine learning model is responsible for that so when you consider or when you build the uh, ai based applications you need to consider this uh, points the responsible ai is uh, ai principles uh, are followed while developing an ai based application and microsoft always make sure that uh, when you use an microsoft ai solution you are following this principles now when it comes to open ai so we have just understood the basics of artificial intelligence so what is machine learning models and uh, what types of models we have and what is responsible ai so now when it comes to open ai so what is this open ai nowadays this is the, one of the trending uh, topic so open ai is an american artificial intelligence research laboratory and they are building the machine learning models which you can use for uh, your applications and services so they their intention is to build the machine learning models and make it available to the end users so that they can also build the ai based solutions so their intention is to promote and develop a friendly ai service their mission is to ensure that artificial general in, intelligence uh, intelligence benefit uh, to all of the humanity means make it available to all users the open ai incorporated working on non -prof, uh, profiles non profit services it's actually non profit so their open ai models if you consider there are two types of services they provide uh the first one is non profit uh, apis are there second the open ai limited partnership which is open ai lp is for profit profit subsidiary of uh, this open ai and that is charging for whatever services you consume so that means open ai is providing a variety of machine learning models they have already researched and developed lots of machine learning models which 
can be then used by the end users. So you just need to go and register for this uh, open AI services, then start using the services for free. But yes, it's the free services has limitations. If you want to use that in a large scale or in your uh, uh, applications, yes, you have to go and purchase or you have to go and subscribe for that open AI services. The open AI models can be used to do almost every kind of AI functionalities. Whatever the AI models can do, the open AI models can also do the same. So it can do virtually any task that requires understanding and generating natural language and the code. So means if you want to generate a blog or a text about a particular topic, yes, you can use the open AI functionality. You will be able to use the open AI models to perform all the uh, operations such as uh, generating the text informations. OK, that is we can say chat completions and completions. You can generate the images or edit the images. It can be used to convert the speech into text. That means the speech services are available. It can be used to moderate the content to detect harmful and sensitive informations. So if you are uh, trying to process some harmful or sensitive or uh, uh, adult or racy contents, the AI models can moderate this, which means if it is not applicable to all the uh, age levels or it is something sensitive, then it can filter that content or it can restrict those, those operations. So that is what moderation. As I mentioned, open AI uh, organization developed uh, many machine learning models that helps you to perform different types of operations. Some of these models can be then uh, fine tuned, which means if you want to enhance the features of some of these models, you can do that with the help of fine tuning. Because I said machine learning models are three types uh, pre built machine learning models, which it does not allow customization because they are pre trained with the millions of data. Second is the custom model which you create your own. The third one is the models which is provided by the AI developers, but you can customize it by providing your own data and you can fine tune them. So this open AI models, some of the open AI, not all, some of the open AI models also allows fine tuning, means you can make limited customizations on the models are adaptive to understand conversation even if sentence has grammatical and spelling mistakes. So when you provide a prompt or an input text, the OpenAI model is capable to correct it and understand in the proper way. There are different machine learning models offered by OpenAI. The most commonly used model is GPT-3 or GPT-3.5. The latest is GPT-3.5, that is chat GPT-3.5. GPT-4 is also available, but only for limited users that we'll talk about later. So this GPT-3 or 3.5 is a set of models that can be, uh, that can understand and generate natural language means it is not a single model. It's a set of models because it uh, 
uh, provides different uh, versions or variations of models. The version 3.5 is improved to understand and generate a code also. Means if you want to generate a programming language code, you can do that with the help of GPT 3.5 also. DAL E is a model that can generate and edit the images given a natural language text called a prompt. So whenever you give a prompt, prompt means a text input text, based on that, it can draw an image. The AI generated images can be drawn. Whisper, it's a general purpose speech recognition model that can perform speech recognition, translation, and language detection. That means this is a speech service provided by the open AI, primarily for speech recognition, translation, and the language detection. Embeddings, this is another model which is used to represent a te the text as a numerical values, and that can be used to measure the relatedness between two pieces of text, okay? And moderation API is primarily used to moderate the contents to determine whether it uh, contains some uh, sensitive data such as uh, uh, hate, threatening, self-harm, sexual or uh, sexual minors, violence, okay, or violence graphic, okay, or personal identity information such as. So if there is some uh, Known applicable content types, something like uh, adult, racy, hate, threatening, self harm kind of contents is uh, uh, present, then the moderation API can go and uh, filter that. Okay, so that uh, in the public platform, if we want to uh, provide that inputs, it we can, we can moderate the content and publish. As a open AI user, you need to understand some of the key concepts. What are the key concepts? Primarily the API key. Because whenever you want to interact with an open AI machine learning model, you need to authenticate to make the request to that model because if you want to use an open AI model inside your application, whether it is a DAL E or a uh, Whisper or maybe embeddings or maybe a moderation or maybe a GPT, whatever model you use to authenticate your request, you have to provide an API key. Now the question from where I can get this API key? It's very simple you have to go to the open ai's website register yourself with the uh, email id and password or you can even use the social media uh, accounts or like microsoft you can use google you can use or apple account you can use means not the social media accounts the organizations accounts you can use and then you can register yourself and uh, generate a key. See, if you look into this portal, this is the Open AI's portal. When you want to register or log in, so you can go and sign up and register, or you can log in with your social media ID. So, social media ID in the sense uh, Microsoft or Google or Apple. So I have already logged in. So once you log in, you will be jumping into this page where you can move to chat GPT or DAL E or the API section. So if you go into the API section, you will land up in this page where you can see this is my account where, where I have logged in with my Gmail account as you can see. And here is an option for viewing the API keys. So you can click and gen generate an API key. Here you can see 
I have already generated an API key. OK, so this key is uh, visible only when you generate. OK, after you close this page, you, you will not be able to see that page again or this key again. So you have to generate a new key or you have to delete and generate a new one. So this key is required to make a request to the open AI models from your application languages like Python. Whenever you want to make a request to the open AI models, you have to use this API key. So second thing is prompt. Because most of this open AI models requires a prompt to execute something or to predict something or to generate something. So you can simply say it is the text inputs what the user is providing. For example, if I want to interact with the chat GPT 3.5, I can simply say, OK, what is uh, the meaning of a particular word? Or can you provide the suggestions for some products? Or something like this. So you are giving a text inputs. That text input is called a prompt. OK. An explicit description of what exactly do you want with a clear set of instructions. Suppose if you are interacting with a DAL E, DAL E is your uh, image editing and drawing tool or API. Suppose if you want to draw an image of a particular uh, object, you have to give an instruction. That's very simple. I can show you one example. Here, this is uh, Azure Open AI's DAL E. I have drawn two images just by giving the instructions like this. So, here you can see the prompt like a draw image of a dog fighting with a lion. So, this is uh, a instruction I have given. So this is my prompt and this generated this image. Similarly, this is what uh, the image of Narasimha in the, the mythical character in the Hindu mythology that you can see draw image of the mythical character Narasimha from the Hindu mythology. It is the combination of lion and human. So I can give a clear description how it looks like, what it is. So I can give more explanation about that, but this is what my prompt. So it can be a short or it can be a large statement. So you can see it uh, generates this particular image, right? So this is what prompt. So prompt need to be clear and specific. The completion endpoint. So whenever you use the GPT models, you will be making your request to an API endpoint. So the completion endpoint is an API endpoint which receives the request from the user or application. OK, so whenever you provide an prompt, whenever you provide a prompt, you are actually making a request to the API endpoint because every model is available as an API endpoint. So the completion endpoint is typically used to accept a simple prompt, OK, which is mostly used by the GPT models like uh, DaVinci or uh, Ada kind of things. But there is a chat completion endpoint also available, which can be used to generate a chat conversation for uh, your open AI models. So if if you want to use chat GPT, then you can use the chat completion API. Or if you chat completion API means it's a typical conversation that OK, the uh, assistant, the chat assistant is uh, helping us to uh, answer, helping us uh, by providing answers to our question. So we can ask a question. So assistant will give an answer. We can ask the next question. The assistant will give a next answer like this a conversation chat conversation we can make 
by using this chat completion endpoint. But the completion endpoint, the very simple completion endpoint is used to accept a simple text and provide a result for that. OK, we'll discuss the completion endpoints later in the demo. Token means the token is another important uh, parameter or an uh, important concept that is the open AI models understand this text that is prompt by breaking it down into tokens means it uh, break this uh, prompts into different uh, small chunks simply called the tokens okay so the token can be a single word or maybe a combination of characters like for example hello how are you if i'm asking so hello can be one token how can be another token r can be another token and u can be another token and you can uh, decide what should be the maximum number of tokens accordingly the model will divide that text suppose if i'm saying hello how are you i have to divide into four tokens only then so hello h hello how will be one token r will be one token u will be another token so sometimes the large text will be divided into multiple tokens like a hamburger which will be divided into ham is one token bur can be another token ger means another token so that is the single word hamburger is divided into multiple tokens so so that represents the number of tokens represents how many words or tokens we can include in the request so the number of tokens in the request includes the prompt plus completion token that means the uh, input text and the output result so the total will be the number of tokens so different models supports different uh, number of tokens uh, limit suppose if you go to chat gpt 3.5 so it may provide 4096 uh, tokens okay so some of the models support 32000 plus tokens 32768 something like that so depends on the model the number of tokens that is supported maximum tokens can vary so that for that you have to look into the documentation of that particular model because in every version they are keep changing the limit of the tokens the number of tokens which is supported the temperature which is another important setting that helps to generate the results so the temperature value can range from 0 to 1 so if you for example if you are asking a question like uh, what is or can you suggest a name for my pet dog so if you are asking this question and you are setting your temperature as zero then it will give you some simple names like a uh, billy or uh, uh, trinky or chunky like that simple simple names can be suggested okay so every time when you make a request it may provide very simple or static results but when you increase the temperature value it will provide some complex results means uh, maybe if you are increasing the temperature value from 0 to 0 0.5 it may be giving the results like a freaking uh, flicky or freaking pity or something like that means some complex names can be provided so if you want to increase the complexity of the result you have to adjust the temperature value okay it's a parameter while making the request to the api the models simply uh, what kind of api you want to use because we have discussed uh, in the previous slide th there are different uh, types of models supported by open ai for uh, they, they are chat GPT models or DAL E model, whisper, embeddings, moderation. So, which model you are using? 
suppose if you are using chat gpt model inside the chat gpt there are many model types okay that is gpt 3.5 turbo gpt 3.5 or uh, davinci 003 davinci 002 davinci 001 like that different uh, types of model within gpt itself is available so the means the old one then he, uh, later and the newer versions like that different the variations you can see okay so you will be uh, using one of this name can you see the base gpt3 models are davinci curie babbage and ada okay so there are different uh, model names available so you have to specify the model name where this chat uh, open ai chat gpt models can be used or what are the different use cases yes we are using artificial intelligence in various uh, sectors so where this can be used some of the use cases we are discussing here so you can use it for education and training purposes so nowadays you can see uh, 10 15 years back what was the training methodology we followed is completely changed and now we are using a different approach so now most of the learnings are through online previously completely book based hard copy based now most of the trainings are uh, online uh, that means it uses or it will make use of internet to uh, conduct the sessions providing the video materials through youtube or some other courses right so similarly the education industry can use the artificial intelligence also for example the trainer needs to provide only the basic understanding about the functionalities of a topic or a particular uh topic he can tell only the basic concepts rest of the things the students can go and ask chat gpt yes the teacher will be telling okay the angular is a single page application and this is how the single page application is working but if they want to know more about the angular they can go to chat gpt and ask okay chat gpt can you provide some Uh, uh features about or can you tell some features about angular or can you tell me how the components are working in angular or can you tell me how angular is different from uh, the other frameworks so this kind of learnings they can do with chat gpt because chat gpt is capable to provide the answers for that create a virtual assistant to handle the day to day activities or day to day task for business such as scheduling the appointments composing and sending the mails managing social media accounts etc can be done using the chat gpt based application so nowadays you can see uh, rich people will have a personal assistant they will be scheduling their meetings they are sending the mails they are preparing the reports and everything so now you the chat gpt applications can do all this for them so they can just uh, give an instruction okay schedule my appointment for tomorrow 5 o'clock so automatically the application can mark it in the calendar with a notification or alarm right or you can tell okay send a mail to uh, the customer saying that so and so reason we are doing this so the gpt can generate a mail for that okay so that means the day to day activities we can uh do with the help of chat gpt so if you say uh this virtual assistant for generating the mails so let me show you one example somewhere i have then so here you can see i have taken an example of generating an email and i have just given an instruction write a leave letter to teacher 
a very simple one write a leave letter to teacher you can see it is just generated the leave letter format can you see date to name of the teacher from your name subject request for leave dear teacher name i am writing this letter to notify that i need to take leave of absence from the school for what is the time for two days three days whatever it is i am doing this because this what is the reason okay i hope you understand the situation and approve my request and so on right so now i don't need to write the leave letter i just need to tell my gpt saying that okay i want to create a uh, mail or i want to create a letter for so and so it will automatically generate that so here you can see i have used the davinci 003 model for doing this operation this you can use as an alternative for google search so now we are doing the search in the google for most of the a search functionality we are doing in the google but yes google is searching for the websites and trying to generate the links okay from different websites and the most popular answer will be given in the top but you can do some uh, more uh, depth research or uh, search operation using the chat gpt so the, if you, if you want to know something about the chat gpt with the more details you can ask this to the chat gpt which can not only provide the uh, answers but also it can give uh, the links okay so for example if you go to the bing nowadays the bing is providing ai powered search operation so Bing Open AI. See this if you go to this, but now this works in the Edge only, so it automatically opens the Edge browser. You can see this is now the Bing search, and here this is AI powered. Okay, the Open AI powered, so you can ask. Okay. Or maybe .NET 6. I'm simply giving this. Let's see what it is generating. It is searching for this particular and it is generating the text. You can see this is uh, providing the detailed text, including the features point by point, and also it's giving some links where I can refer more about this. See, this is a search only now uh, what google is doing more than that i can do now with the bing because now microsoft bing is an ai powered search so you can see i have just asked what is new in dotnet 6 it just uh, give the complete new features one by one right Text classification and sentiment analysis. As I have explained previously, for finding out the positive and negative reviews uh, from the customers, we can use AI. Or we can use it for detecting the uh, mails, okay, whether it is spam or not spam. We can use this AI services. Enhance the product description. So if you want to write some catchy description about a product, because people like me may not be uh, capable to write some catchy statements about my new product. OK, so what I can do is I can give my product features. And ask ChatGPT to generate a good description about my product so that I can copy that description and put into my advertisement. Right, so I don't need to go and write the uh, descriptions as a uh, user, I can tell my 
chat gpt to create a product description so i just need to tell what product it is and what are the different features of it so it will write the descriptions in an attractive manner customer engagements it helps a business to increase its online presence and customer interaction by assisting with the customer involvement on social media or by providing conversation starters on website uh, blogs or forums so if you want to create blogs or forums you can tell chat gp to, to create a blog on a particular topic so it will create the complete blog on the given topic you just need to copy paste that into social media or some other website and start discussing about that research and content curation the open ai la large language model the chat gpt is largely being used to research any topic online and select relevant content from various sources the per these particular use cases of chat gpt helps business development a coherent and effective content marketing plan as we have discussed if you want to know more about a particular uh, topic you can do a online search with the help of uh, chat gpt and extract uh, relevant informations out of that and generate your own report from that so for generating the reports by doing an online search you can just tell chat gpt to do that and you don't need to do it manually compelling ad copy it's always been difficult to develop distinctive and appealing ad copy of hundreds of marketing initiatives the chat gpt has made it easier to manage very simple if you want to create uh, a caption or tagline for a particular uh, shop so okay i'm starting a shop for uh, ice cream so give a catchy caption for my shop so you can tell chat gpt to generate a caption for your shop it will do that okay so you can do anything with chat gpt nowadays okay but it has its own limitations also we'll discuss that later chat gpt 3.5 that is gpt 3.5 is an ai driven chatbot that allows you to have human like conversations as we have discussed i have already shown a couple of uh, demos also whenever we want to interact with uh, the chatbots so usually we will be providing some input text and the virtual assistant that is chatbot is providing the uh, response for that so chat gpt is an ai powered chatbot so that whenever you ask a question it can uh, go and get the answers from the trained data and provide a relevant result so it may be uh, for generating a text caption image or something else right so what we can do previously we have discussed in the previous two slides we have discussed the use cases so you can interact with the chat gpt okay and ask it to do something microsoft being an investor in open ai is rapidly moving to integrate chat gpt and other ai features into its existing products example bing search so now microsoft is one of the investor in the open ai we have discussed discussed uh, this already open ai is an uh, organization who is inventing more and more uh, ai models to make it available to the end users and microsoft is an investor in open ai and they themselves adopting this open ai models into their products okay that means they are using this in products like bing search teams okay or uh, github copilot and kind of products they are uh, including this ai features and that is what we have just seen i have showed you the bing search uh, that is powered by open ai 
GPT 3.5, which is short for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer version 3.5. It's a cutting edge language model developed by OpenAI and capable in understanding and generating human like text that we have already seen when I went to uh, the chat GPT page and uh, try to generate some text or try to generate some answers by asking a question. It, it uh, creates a very lengthy and descriptive uh, answers for that, right? But you must be wondering what I was using the UI. If you have already used the Open AI's website, you may be wondering what website I will be using. So this is the Microsoft Azure AI Studio. Okay, so the same similar you will be getting in the uh, Chat GPT's page. Means once you log in with open ai and if you are interested you can log in to the open ai and go to this chat gpt and you will be landing on the chat gpt page so here so here you can ask whatever you want for example create a blog about uh maybe dot net uh, 3.1 so it is just giving the complete blog as you can see the title of the blog is given and it is giving the introduction and the complete blog instruction is giving as you can see this is what chat gpt can do so you can ask chat gpt to do whatever you provide the prompt here so here is the prompt you will be providing the prompt here and it is accepting the prompt and then generating the result for you. Right. GPT 3.5 can comprehend and generate text in conjunction with modalities such as images and audio. So yes, uh, in later models of GPT, can include images and uh, audio also. So when it comes to GPT-4, we'll discuss about that. So it can use uh, uh, audio and images as input as well as output. So the terminologies that we use in chat GPT is primarily prompts, completions, and tokens. And we have already discussed about that, but yes, Simply, I'm uh, reiterating the same. Prompts simply means a sentence or a phrase that is presented to chat GPT language model to generate a response. Means if you want to generate an output, you have to provide some kind of text input to chat GPT. That text input is simply called the prompt. Okay. Completions means a completion is the output which is generated by the language model based on the given prompt. You must have seen just now when I asked ChatGPT to create a blog, it has given a large blog. So that is called a completion, right? A completion is the answer to your question. Token, a token refers to a unit of text that the model process uh, during the training and inference. That means when you provide a prompt, the model is understanding it as tokens, means it uh, divide that text into small pieces called the tokens before processing. It can be a short as single as a single character. Uh, it, it can be short as a single character or as long as a word depending on the tokenization scheme used. So tokenization is the process of breaking down that text into small pieces. So uh, it uses the default tokenization process, uh, approach, but it is possible that we can control how many tokens we have to use. So accordingly, it will divide that text into n number of tokens. So if 
you are providing okay i need uh, to get the results in 10 tokens within 10 tokens or 15 tokens or 100 tokens so as the number of tokens increases it will try to enhance the answer okay for small tokens it will be providing a short answer for large tokens means if the number of tokens allowed is more then it can provide a descriptive answer when it comes to gpt4 so far we have discussed and used gpt 3.5 that is chat gpt 3.5 but gpt4 is a large multimodal model what is multimodal model because accepting it accepting the text inputs and emitting the text in today's time but in future it can use the images also that means uh, GPT-4 is currently only available to selected users, okay, on request. Okay, so means if you are planning to use GPT-4, you have to make an access request and they will be providing access to GPT-4 on a uh, weightage basis. Means you have to wait when the uh, available slot comes they will provide access to gpt4 even i have requested for gpt4 so we are also in the waiting list so when the time comes they will provide access to gpt4 models so like gpt 3.5 turbo which is the one of the uh, latest version of gpt 3.5 gpt4 is a uh, optimized for chat but works well with uh, well for traditional completion tasks both using the chat completions api so the Ch gpt4 is capable to generate the results for completions as well as chat completions so what is completion and chat completion difference i have explained one time but i'll explain one more completion means you are providing a simple text and it provides an answer for that. But chat completion means you are giving a structured input, which is a structure of a conversation. For example, the system is used to set the behavior of uh, the assistant and the user is asking one question and the assistant is giving an answer for that. Again, the user is asking the second question the assistant is providing the answer like that. So that is called a conversation. So a chat conversation structure need to be given as an input so that the GPT will understand or chat GPT will understand what is the context or what kind of assistant it is so that it can provide answers for the future question. So chat completion and completion is something different. So chat completions are typically used with the GPT 3.5 uh, models, which because it's a chat GPT model and completions API you can use with uh, the the uh, DaVinci models, which I'll show you in the example. So there are different uh, versions of GPT 4 available. GPT 4, which is more capable than GPT 3.5 model which is able to do more complex tasks and optimize the for chat. So GPT-4 is uh, capable to do more complex tasks and it is primarily designed for chat. And how many tokens it is support? It is support tokens up to 8,192. And these uh, open AI models primarily using the data up to september 2021 okay so if you ask something about uh, new topics means which is which happened or which is uh, developed after 2021 september the gpt may not be able to answer that okay so uh, the reason is your uh, chat gpt models are trained with the data 
since uh, uh, till September 2021. So till that date, data is only available with the chat GPT. GPT-4-0613 is a snapshot of the GPT-4 from June 30th, 2023 with a function calling data. Unlike GPT-4, this model will not receive updates because this is just a snapshot of the existing model. So that is GPT-4's uh, uh, snapshot. Copy is uh, 0613, which means it is not going to receive any updates. and this will be deprecated three months after the new version is released. Means whenever the new version comes, after three months it will get uh, deleted. So GPT 432K, which has the same capabilities of the GPT 4, but four times more the the context length. That means the number of tokens which is supported. As you can see. The number of tokens which is supported is 32K, that is 32,768 tokens supported. Okay, this is also using the training data till uh, September 2021 only. And uh, there is a snapshot version of this GPT 432K available that is uh, uh, not getting any further updates and it will get deleted after the new version is uh, released. So what is mean by this training data? See, if you go to chat GPT and you are asking something about the chat GPT. So which is the latest uh, .NET version? So if you ask this, it is going to produce a result. See, it is giving or it is starting like this. As of my knowledge cutoff in September 2021, which means this is no only information up to uh, 2021 September. So the latest stable version is .NET 6. But now you can search in the internet. The latest version is 7, which is stable version. And 8 is going to release next, which is currently in preview. But here the GPT is aware, aware about only up to .NET 6. Or you can ask about some uh, new, suppose recently we have uh, uh, seen the World Test Championship for ICC. So you can ask about that, okay, who is the winner of the ICC Test Championship? So it will talk about the 2021 Test Championship. See, it is saying, according to its knowledge, it's not completed. So that means it is it, it is able to give answers up to September 2021. So this is currently the limitation of uh, chat GPT. But yes, uh, it is a powerful model. So later you can see uh, it may train with a more recent data. Okay, so currently it is using the data up to September 2021. Chat GPT 3.5 and GPT 4. If you see the chat GPT 4 is an enhanced uh, uh, to understand, is enhanced to understand the context and distinguish the nuances to result in more accurate results and coherent responses. So GPT 4 is more accurate than 3.5 version. And ChatGPT has multimodal capabilities. That means, means GPT-4 can uh, process uh, images, videos, text using the same API. Okay, that means GPT-4 is a multimodal model, which means it can be used for processing images, videos, text using the same API. GPT 3.5 can take uh, 4096 tokens, but GPT 4 has been designed to accept up to 32,768 tokens. We have seen in the previous table, 32K version is supporting up to 
32,768 tokens. GPT 3.5 can create human-like text. GPT 4 not only can do that, but also can generate different dialects and respond with the emotions in the context of input, making response more personal and genuine. The dialects include regional and cultural variations. See, understand, based on the user's behavior and input, it can decide what kind of dialect to be used. Okay, what kind of uh, uh, statements or emotions uh, to be used for producing the result. GPT-4 has been designed to minimize undesirable results, less likely to generate biased, offensive, uh, hallucinated responses, making it more trustworthy than all processors. So this is simply this is more uh, uh, powerful uh, one which provides less uh, errors, which provides less errors and uh, uh, no bias, no offensive text. OK, and provides a, a po more complex answers than the GPT 3.5. And very importantly, this is one of the cost effective model. OK, which means if you are using chat GPT or uh, any other model, it is processing based on the number of tokens. OK, so it, uh, uh, how many tokens it is processing? based on that it will get charged right so gpt4 is much more cheaper than the other gpt models now we will see what is gpt and how we can use that in our python code if you see i have already shown some examples of uh, GPT. This is the Bing that how the Bing is uh, now using the AI. It's an AI powered uh, Bing search. We can see this is again providing the similar functionalities of the chat GPT website. It's whatever you type here. It is providing the similar uh, kind of output that the open AI chat GPT is providing, right? So this is what the chat GPT's UI or interface. Now, if you want to use that inside your applications, let us go and use inside the Python code. The primary step you have to follow is creating a account in the open ai so for that you have to go to the platform.openai.com website and register yourself i have already shown you can register with your microsoft google or apple account once you register you can uh, generate an api key i have already shown from where you can go and generate the API key. Then you are ready to use the open AI models in your applications. So here you can see, I can install the pip package for the open AI. So if you want to use open AI with Python, you can simply install the Python package that is pip install open AI. So when you run this, it's going to install all the relevant packages. Then you have to go and set up the key. So here you can see I'm importing the package, import open AI, and then you have to set the authentication key. So this is what the key which I have generated. So you can say open AI dot API key equal to what is the key? that you have obtained that you can copy and paste. But this is not recommended to use the token or uh, use the keys like this. You have to store the keys inside environment variables or some other secured uh, key storage mechanisms and then read the keys using that. That means if you are storing inside the environment variables, 
you can read that using os dot environ function so you can uh, use the os package to read the environment uh, variables in the python so here because i am not using environment variable i have directly copy pasted the api key so after this key has been set now i can list the models which are available there so i can just go and run this open ai dot model dot list so it will show the models which are available there you can see the result is coming here but this result is very short but you can see three dots which means some text is uh, uh, shortened so what you can do if you want to see the full output click on this text editor you can see here this is the output here you can see the first one is whisper one that is one model okay and another one is babbage which is another model next is da vinci that is another model next is text da vinci edit 001 next is babbage code search code that is another one next is text similarity babbage which is another one Next is code Da Vinci Edit 001. Text Da Vinci 001. Then here we have Ada, that is another one. Babbage Code Search Text, that is another one. Babbage Similarity. Like this, if you say there are lots of models available. And finally, come into GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K. Okay. And if you scroll up here, it is this is GPT 3.5 Turbo. So these are different models which is available in Open AI. Okay, so there are different different models you can find out. Okay. So once you have displayed the list of models. You need to extract the information about a particular model. For example, I want to know more about GPT 3.5 Turbo only. So I can retrieve the information about only that particular model. Here it shows the information about that. Okay. Then here I'm going to use the completion API. You can see here. OpenAI.completion.create, which means I am going to do a text completion using which model. So we have listed different model. So I'm using the text DaVinci 003, which is the name of the model. And here is a prompt. Prompt means I am providing an input text. What is the text I'm giving? Suggest a name for my pet shop. Okay, it's a very simple. Maximum tokens I'm giving as 10. Okay, that means for the input plus output, the total number of tokens I want to give 10. Temperature value I'm giving as 1, means the highest value. And whenever it returns a response, the response I'm printing, and also the response here you can see response provides an answer of choices, which will be an array. From there, the first answer is this one. It's a text value will be the answer. Here, this is the one which I have already executed in the morning. You can see it's giving furry friends pet emporium. That is the name it suggests. So next time when I run, it may be giving a different uh, value. See, it gives a different one. That is Pa Palace Pet Store. Next time when I run, it may be giving a different one for reference pet shop so every time when i run it is giving different different answers for that so if you want you can give the temperature 0 0.5 okay there is no much difference in this because the number of tokens is 10 only so if you increase or decrease the tokens it may affect because it's just uh, suggesting the name of the pet shop so it may not uh, differ much values 
but if you want you can uh, run with a more token so the input and output total number of tokens you can specify here so 10 tokens because uh, it's very important to understand that the number of tokens that you consume here is affecting the cost means if you are using a pay, uh, paid model okay this is currently the free one so if you are using a paid model then you will be charged based on the number of tokens used okay uh, that we'll discuss later in the azure open ai now it comes to gpt 3.5 turbo model which is primarily a chat gpt model it is used for chat purpose as you can see this is chat completion api as you can see this is simply completion api where i am using the model as davinci 003 but chat G, sorry gpt 3.5 turbo is primarily used for chat okay so chat completions api we have to use so this is the endpoint chat completion endpoint we have to use so there I'm selecting the model as GPT 3.5 Turbo and messages. I have to set the structure of my, uh, what to say, uh, conversation. So the conversation must be in a specific format. There should be a role property and a content property. Role means who is uh, doing that conversation and content means what is the prompt. Role I can say system, which means this is the first conversation or first uh, statement in every conversation, which is used to set the context or set the type or behavior of the assistant. So what type of chat assistant it is? So I'm saying you are a helpful assistant. OK, that means I'm setting that this is a helpful chat assistant. Then as a user, user is asking a question. What is that? Who won the World Series in 2020? So the assistant, that is chat assistant, is giving the answer. The Los Angeles Dodgers won the World Series in 2020. So we have we are setting the chat conversation format. And the next question is asked by the user where it where was it played okay means that the pre you can see i'm i'm just asking where was it played so the system is able to understand what was the previous conversation from that it will understand the context we were talking about what world series 2020 right so where was it played means where was it it means what world series 2020 so the system is able to understand from the previous conversations we are talking about what object yes we are talking about world series 2020 so we don't need to repeat it where was uh, the world series 2020 played we can just ask we, where was it played so that it is representing what world series 2020 so the system is able to understand or the model is able to understand what is the current context and what we are talking about so it is giving the answer when i run this so i'm printing only the message from the output what is that the output is in this format can you say content which is the output role is the assistant 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 is giving that is virtual chat assistant is giving the answer the 220, 2020 uh, world series was played at globe field globe life field uh, which is located in Arlington, Texas. Okay, so that means the next answer has come. So we are setting a chat context here. And when the user asks a next question, it is able to understand from the previous discussions. Yes, it we are talking about that particular object or entity. So this is another example you can say. Again, chat completion, but here the system is setting that you are a shopping assistant. So I'm setting the behavior of the chat assistant because this is set by the system and this will be the first one in the conversation. And the user is asking which is the top brand for laptops. So the assistant is giving an answer. So by giving this one or two answers, 
the assistant will understand okay i am a sales assistant or uh, shopping assistant so the assistant is giving an answer H hp is the best brand for laptops dell is also good okay now the next question we are asking which brand mobile is best okay so it is giving an answer because it is a chat assist sorry a shopping assistant it can understand that we are talking about the mobiles and it is giving some answer here you can see there are several smartphone brands that are popular and considered to be the best depending on the personal pre uh, preference and requirement some of the top brands are samsung and then its features apple and its features uh, oneplus and its features like that it gives the answers can you see this time the statement is little different from the previous one okay but you can see it includes apple samsung google huawei and oneplus okay so it is capable to understand the context of the conversation and provide the answer for it right so this is the chat completion uh, endpoint and you can see here we are using chat completion uh, api but here above we are using the completion api so here we are giving a single prompt as the input but whenever we use the gpt model gpt 3.5 turbo we have to use a chat conversation uh, input so it should be in the format of uh, a role and the content So this is how we can use the open AI GPT models in our Python application. It's very, very easy to integrate this in the Python. And a couple of uh, uh, more points about this. The future improvements expected is addressing the neutrality. That is still there is a scope to make responses more unbiased. Understanding the user that is making responses more personalized by understanding who, where, and how, how the person is communicating means simply the dialects and regional uh, parameters can be considered and provide the answers accordingly. External integrations to expand the reach through web, web API and robotic integrations means it can be integrated with external services long-term memory this area needs improvement by enhancing capability to recall past interactions and apply knowledge to future conversations we have just saw when i asked where was it played it was it is understanding from the previous conversation that uh, we were talking about the world series 2020 so it uh, give the answer for that but what if I'm asking something about yesterday or day before yesterday or if maybe a week before I have asked? It may not be able to recall that information. So for in increasing the memory for long term conversations. Uh, is very important because maybe uh, if the conversation is continuing after a period, so it should recall the previous conversations. Reducing hallucination minimize instances of AI creating false responses. So trying to reduce the false responses. And deprecations of models. OK, because there are deprecations happening means some of the versions may not be available after some time. So let's understand that. And it is very important for a developer because if you are using some models, and after some time, if you're trying to look for a support or a documentation, you may not get it. So let's understand that the upgrade and the dep depreciation process for the initial versions of GPT 3.5 tur uh, Turbo and GPT 4 announced in March has been started. It means the upgrade of GPT 4 and deprecation of the older versions has been already started. Applications using the stable model names such as GPT 3.5 Turbo, GPT 4, and GPT 4 32K 
will automatically be upgraded to the newer model versions in June 27, 2023. Developers can continue using the older models by specifying GPT 3.5 Turbo 0301, GPT 4 0314, GPT 4 32K 0314. That means you, you can still use, even after June 27, you are able to use the old models for some time Okay, by explicitly specifying the name of the models like a GPT 3.5 Turbo. 0301 so you have to explicitly specify the model name these older models will be accessible through september 13 2023 after which request specifying those model names will fail so they are giving the hint that from september 13th onwards these models will not work so if you have an application which is already using any of these models you have to start migrating them into the new versions because if if you make any calls to this api models after september it will not work okay so always uh, read the documentations and understand which is the latest models available and accordingly migrate your applications to use the latest versions fine tuning process what is fine tuning so we have already discussed in the beginning some of the machine learning models allow you to train with your own data and generate a new model so model is already there but you can train with your own data and fine tune it so such fine tuning is possible in the gpt also so GPT-3 has been pre-trained on vast amount of text from the open internet. Yes, GPT-3 is already pre-trained model with the millions of data collected from open internet. Fine tuning improves a few short learning by training on many more examples than that can fit in the prompt, letting you to achieve better results on a wide number of tasks. So, some areas if it is not able to provide proper answers because there is a few short learning means the number of uh, inputs that is used for training on such areas may not be uh, sufficient for example if you are asking about a particular topic which is specific to a person or specific to an entity the model may not be trained with that many data okay means there is a uh, less number of data used for training on that particular information. In such cases, you may not get a, a, a actual result what you expect. Okay, such cases you can train that model with your own data. Once the model has been fine tuned, you won't need to provide examples in the prompt anymore. So while providing the uh, or while doing the fine tuning, uh, you don't need to go and provide examples, okay, like this, like that. Usually, when you provide the prompt, you say, uh, simple example, I'm saying, can you uh, make an ice cream? Uh, if you are asking this a question, then you can give example, like, uh, for example, using vanilla and chocolate, uh, putting into this and uh, creating a mix of uh, uh, butterscotch for generating this. So you are giving an example to make it more clear. But if you do the fine tuning, these examples are not relevant. You just need to ask, okay, can you make an ice cream? So it will give the instructions for making an ice cream. So now also it may give the uh, answer for how to make an ice cream, but it may not be more specific to your area because for example, uh, a very simple question now nowadays you ask the uh, gpt that how to make a fried chicken so it will simply give you a general answer okay you have to go buy this one and make it uh, marinate this chicken and put into that oil and de do the deep fry and so on so okay but you are doing this for the uh, 
for, for example, KFC. So what you can do, you can train the model, you can fine tune the model by giving the instruction how to make KFC fried chicken. Okay, so KFC fried chicken's instructions you are giving. Okay, so after training the model with the uh, KFC fried chicken's instructions, Later, when you ask, you have to just ask how to make a fried chicken. Simply, it will tell you how to make a KFC type of fried chicken. You don't need to tell explicitly that, okay, how to make a uh, fried chicken like a KFC by using this, this, this. You don't need to give explain, explanations for that. You just need to say, okay, how to make a fried chicken. It will give you the instructions how to make the KFC type of fried chicken because you have already fine-tuned with your own instructions so that next time onwards you don't need to explain more. Okay, so that is a fine tuning. This save the cost and enables lower latency request. Why it is because uh, how this is saving the cost, the reason I have said the cost is calculated based on the number of tokens used, right? For example, if if you have if you are asking a question, to make it more clear, you will be giving examples. Okay, how to make fried chicken? If you ask only this question, the number of tokens used is very less, maybe 10, 15 tokens. But to make it more clear, you will be giving examples also along with it. Okay, like the how to make a fried chicken uh, like a KFC, which uses uh, uh, what to say, chicken, uh, garlic, and maybe uh, what to say, cornflakes and everything, and putting in deep fry like that. So you give more explanation to get the correct answer. But if your model is already trained for understanding the KFC type of fried chicken, you just need to tell only one statement how to make fried chicken. So that means the number of tokens which is required to give the prompt is very less. And the system will understand that you are asking for the KFC type. OK, so you don't need to give any explanation of that. So because the number of tokens are used less, the cost will be reduced. And also when the number of tokens increases, it has to go and do more search to find out the rel relevant answer. But if it is already trained to find the relevant answer, then the latency will also reduce because you have already instructed how to make KFC type of fried chicken. So you just need to tell, okay, how to make KFC chicken or KFC fried chicken. That number of tokens is less and you have already trained this how to make this KFC fried chicken. So it will simply give the answer very quickly so that the latency can be reduced. Okay. So fine tuning help us to save the cost and also reduce the latency. At a high level, fine tuning involves the following steps. That is prepare and upload the training data. That means what you want to teach the model, you can do that. Train a new fine-tuned fine model using that data and use your fine-tuned model. So you can directly use that fine-tuned model. So the pre-trained pre data is there, plus you, are, you have trained the model with your own custom data. So it is more fine-tuned. It is more faster than the uh, actual model. Fine tuning is currently only available for the ba following base models like a DaVinci, Curie, Babbage, and Ada. Okay, only these models are currently supporting the fine tuning. That is also you have to keep in mind. Now coming to the Azure Open AI. So we have discussed lots of things about the Open AI. What are the different models? how it can be used, okay, how to uh, create prompts, what is the difference between completions and chat completions, how to generate the API key and use it in the Python applications, a lot of things we have discussed. But understand, OpenAI as a general API, uh, AI model, you can just use it. So the uh, responses may be delayed because yes, we are using a free, 
freely available open ai model otherwise you have to pay explicitly for the open ai model the the one which is we are using currently is a free model so it will be using not very powerful uh, computations for generating the results and it uh, does not provides uh, uh, enterprise grade security and other features but if you are expecting the open ai models with the features of a cloud environment like a enterprise grade security enterprise grade infrastructures for, that means super computing power okay so that means within seconds you are expecting the results okay so such cases you can use the azure open ai so azure open ai is the implementation of open ai in the azure platform so usually open ai runs in its own infrastructure in its own computing environment okay and it does not provide any features like a private networking okay you you have to call it from a private networking environment and uh, maybe your customers are in india but because open ai is a us based company most of the uh, computing servers will be in us only so whenever you make a request to the open ai models this processing will happens in the us and then response comes to india so this will create latency right but when you use the azure open ai you can use the exact same open ai models in your own regions so in which region you want to use the open ai models you can use in that location so currently the number of locations which is available uh, is limited but in future they are adding this feature into more and more regions currently it is available only in limited locations but because open ai azure open ai is just uh, launched uh, it just made available uh, to general public so whenever people start using it they will make it available into more regions so you can use this open ai models such as dal e uh, gpt 3.5 codex and other language models you can use in the azure environment so that it uses the azure supercomputers to execute the machine learning models and you can also use the enterprise features like uh, secure key storage private networking and so on okay it is priced at a 0.002 dollar per 1000 tokens and billing for all chat gpt usage begins march 13 2023 okay so from uh march 20, 13 2023 it has start charging that means before that it was uh, only accessible to limited users and it was uh, free but from that day onwards it is became chargeable and uh, you have to pay 0.002 dollar per 1000 tokens means whenever you make a request per 1000 tokens you have to pay this much and microsoft already integrated this open ai features into uh, different microsoft products such as github copilot microsoft teams premium and microsoft bing search bing search i have i have already shown you okay so that ai powered one working with the azure open ai the azure open ai provides rest api access to open ai models including the gpt3 codex embeddings model series means you can simply make request to the azure open ai services using the rest apis the new gpt4 and the chat gpt 3.5 that is gpt335 turbo model series have now reached the general availability so it is now generally available Users can access the service through REST APIs, Python SDK, or their web-based interface in the Azure Open AI Studio. So this Azure Open AI Studio is the one which I have showed. Here you can see this 
is the Azure Open AI Studio. Okay, so this is the DAL E example. So here, suppose if you want to try something, you can give a prompt here and you can try the DAL E, which is currently in preview only. So maybe draw an image of cat and uh, dog eating food. I'm just giving an instruction. I'm not sure whether it will give the actual result. Yes, you can see it uh, generates an image that cat and dog is eating food, right? So this is DAL E. Similarly, you can also go to the chat. So here you can ask your question here. Okay, so for assistant setup, you can check set what type of chat assistant it is. Okay, so simply that let it be default. So here, see it's a chat bot. You can ask. Okay. So this language model not access to the real time weather information. So you can ask something about. Okay. Who is hmm. see this is giving answer to the question, right? So you can see uh, this is using currently the deployment that is what is deployment. I will tell you. So it is currently using the deployment model that is GPT 3.5, that is 3.5 turbo. Okay, so what is this deployment? If you want to use the Azure Open AI services, if you want to use the Azure Open AI services, you have to go and create an Open AI resource in the Azure portal. But unfortunately, this Azure Open AI access is not available to everyone at this point of time. Where if you need access to the Azure Open AI, you have to request, means you have to fill an application form and submit this. Once you submit this, maybe within 24 hours, they will process it. And if they feel that, okay, this is a genuine request, they will approve the request and give access for Open AI services. That means you can go to the Azure portal and then create for. Open AI service. The Azure Open AI service you can create. This is what it is. You, you can specify the resource group and the name. So you can see currently it is available only in limited regions like uh, East US, France. UK and West Europe. So going forward, they will make it available to different regions. So currently the open AI models are only available in this regions. OK. So I have already created one resource OK, uh, in East US. So you can give a name for your uh, resource. OK, so I can say Synergetics Open AI 2. So I have already created one. So I can give this name. And pricing model I have selected standard. And below, uh, okay, here you can see the terms and conditions for the policies. Next, here you can configure the network configuration. That means whether this open AI models are accessible from public internet or it is accessible only from the selected networks within your Azure subscription. That is what I said. The network private network security is available for OpenAI models. So in the general OpenAI, it is not possible that you, you want your OpenAI models to be secured within a network. 
okay but here in azure open ai whenever you create an open ai model here you can make sure that it is only accessible from the network which i am created i am creating okay so that is possible after you create this model you will get a resource something like this i have already created as you can see this here we have the keys and endpoints this is the key one and key two and there is an endpoint this is what the azure open ai endpoint okay and here you can see the model deployments okay means you have created an open ai resource but which model to use that is not decided so for that you have to manage the deployments for when you click the manage deployments it will take you to the open ai studio so that is what this portal so here under this management section you can see the deployments right under this deployments you can see i have done two deployments one is using the gpt 3.5 model and another one is using text davinci 003 model okay so there are three two deployments i have done using two different models okay so if i want to deploy something else click on create deployment i can select a deployment of which model so you can see these are the models which is currently available okay so if i want to deploy something like a text similarity query 001 then you can select this or text ada 001 you can deploy that okay so i have already done the deployment and the name of the deployment whatever name provide here for example if i select this and i can give a name as gpt 35 Two. So, the, because I have already deployed this with the same name, GPT-335 Turbo, this you can give a different name, something like a My GPT-35. This is also fine. Whatever name you want, you can deploy. Okay. So, once you do the deployment, see it is successfully deployed, and you can see this is one deployment. So, there are three deployments I done. This one. And this one is using GPT-35. Okay, that means 3.5. Now, how to use this in our application? Suppose if you are a developer, then how we can use this inside your applications? Okay, so for that, you have to go to the Python environment. Just like how you use the OpenAI library, same way you have to use the same library as you can see you have to go and use the pip install open ai this is the library which you have to use you can install all the libraries and then you have to specify the api endpoint and the key so what is the api endpoint here which you can get from the azure portal from here the key and endpoint. See, this is what the key which you can copy from here, and this is what the endpoint. So these two you have to store here. So I'm storing them into two variables. Then I am importing the necessary uh, packages using the import statement. OpenA is imported. And while configuring this, you have to clearly specify OpenAI dot API type is Azure. Okay, so we because we are not using the general OpenAI, it is the Azure OpenAI. So API type equal to Azure of uh, Azure, and then OpenAI dot API base. Base means what is the endpoint? So this API endpoint which we have already stored here, that is this one. And API version that is 2023.5.15. And open API key that is the key which is stored here. So once that is declared, variables are declared, 
the same way how we have done the operations in uh, open ai chat completion and completion you can do that see here open ai dot chat completion and you need to specify the engine type so engine type means which deployment you are using as you can see i have three deployments here one deployment name is this one right this is gpt 35 turbo that is what currently used here okay this is the name of the deployment i have to specify but if i want to execute with this i can use this name also my gpt 35 but uh, if you have done the deployment just now then it will it may not give a, the result because it, it takes 5 minutes to uh, produce results okay means it start working so you have to wait for 5 minutes to make it available then only it will work so usually it takes 5 minutes sometimes it uh, gets activated before that also but if you want you can try it now also you can see that i am giving the messages the system is used to set the context you are a helpful assistant and the question which is asked by the user user is asking does op azure open ai support customer managed keys so the assistant is answering yes customer managed keys are supported in azure open ai then the user is asking the next question do other cognitive services support this too okay this means what the previous question is about the customer managed keys so other cognitive services also support this this means customer managed keys so it is understanding the context of the previous discussion right so let's see what the answer it provides see here yes other cognitive services also support customer managed keys so this engine is now working you can see this engine is giving the answer okay this include the cognitive services like a text analytics translator and more okay, so this is the answer but if i want to use a completion api so this is the chat completion but if i want to go for a completion which is a simple uh, prompt i want to use then i have to go for completion api there i can give a prompt this is my prompt write a tagline for my ice cream shop so i'm giving this as the prompt and what is the engine I'm providing? Engine means the deployment name. So here you can see what is my deployment name. Text DaVinci 003. Okay. So if I put that here and make a request, see, cool down with our creamy creations. That is a tagline for the ice cream shop. Okay. And here you can see another example. I'm asking it to write a paragraph about angular okay i'm asking the da vinci model to generate a paragraph you can see here the difference is i am giving that max tokens value as 250 here it is just a 10 so it is giving a short answer i'm giving here 250 as the max tokens value and let's execute this see when the number of tokens increases it takes more time See, look at the difference here it is 0 0.4 seconds it executes but here it's execute three seconds can you see the difference because it is generating a lengthy answer and you can see angular is a typescript based open source framework model and so on so it's a very lengthy one right as you can see so whatever you do with the open ai the exact same features and functionalities you can do with the azure open ai also the difference is it provides some more features like a network security uh, managed identity okay tagging uh, metrics that is monitoring all features these are some of the enterprise features that azure is adding on top of it so it's behind the scene it is using the same models but it to provide some extra features like monitoring then uh, identity management then uh, uh, networks integration right secure key storage and so on 
once you create a open ai resource you have to do deployments deployment means which model you are planning to use you have to do a deployment of that model so you have i have deployed this models and na deployment name can be anything whatever name you like that like i have given my gpt 35 and whenever you call this from the python application you can you need to specify the engine name as the deployment name and you can use chat completion endpoint or the completion endpoint for making request and generate the results right so that's it from my side and here i think i have covered what is artificial intelligence basics what is open ai and the different models of open ai and we have discussed what the open ai can do some of the examples we have seen using python as well as the portal then we have also discussed about the azure open ai so that any microsoft user azure user they want to use the enterprise features of uh, azure with open ai then you can use the azure open ai models right so that's it from my side now if you have any questions you can put your I'll try to answer those questions Hello. Uh, if you have any queries, please write it down in our uh, in our chat box. And also, uh, don't worry about the session missed uh, sessions. So you can watch it in our YouTube channel. So we will upload it in two to three days. Okay. And also, I have shared the feedback form uh, in the chat box. Please do share your feedbacks in that form.
Okay. Hitesh asked uh, one question. There was a code section in DAL E preview. You want to see that? Okay. See, this is what the image which is generated. And this can be generated by using this code. This is the Python code they have given. How to use this API? So you will be using openai.image API. Instead of completions or chat completions, you will be using openai.image. And then you can provide the prompt. So what is a prompt? Suppose here I have given draw an image of dog and cat eating food or something like that. So that descriptive prompt you can provide here. So this is exactly same how we use the. What to say? Chat completions model, but here the. Difference is we are using the image parameter. And you have to specify the. Models. Accordingly.
Thank you so much for this informative session and also thank you everyone for joining this and please uh, do share your feedback form before leaving the session. Thank you.